All right, so to be able to dynamically update our questions and pull them from an array, we're gonna need a game JS file. That's where we're gonna do all of that stuff. And just to make sure that it gets included, we need to come into our game HTML and do a script tag uh, referencing game JS. And we can just check that this is working by doing a console log saying hello. Oops, actually, if we could type this correctly. Hello world from game. So if we save this and then do an inspect here and open up our console, you should see that log statement there, which is great. I'm gonna actually give, since we're gonna be doing a little bit more JavaScript stuff, I'm gonna put these side by side and give a little bit more room to the code, or excuse me, to the browser so that we can pull open our uh, console every once in a while when we need to see something in JavaScript. So we've got this thing working. Now uh, we need to get a reference in our in our JavaScript to several pieces of our of our HTML elements. And so the first one is our question. So it's got an ID of question uh, that makes sense. Then uh, to get a reference to this choice text, this is these this is the text for the choice, the answer choice that we need to update. To get a reference to this we could give each of these an ID and have it be, you know, choice one, choice two, choice three, choice four. Uh, but there's a better way to do that. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to query based on the class choice text. And that'll give us a list of those choices. And then we'll update from there. Now we're also gonna add a little piece of information to each of these so that we can distinguish between them. So data number one, uh, basically this is gonna be a custom data attribute that we're gonna add to each of these and we'll use this in a minute. Uh, but this is just gonna be one, two, three, four. And this is so that we can different, differentiate between these, uh, these different choices when we query, uh, when we select all of them. So we'll kind of see what that means in a second. So a couple of things that we wanna do is we want to uh, get a reference to the question. So question equals and if you've never done uh, DOM querying, uh, right now we're gonna do document.get element by ID. And uh, this ID is gonna be question, all right? And we're gonna do a lot of these uh, get by ID. So I've got a shortcut here for get ID. Uh, that's the snippet that I created in VS Code. You can look into creating snippets yourself uh, and kind of set something up like this. And I can show you what it looks like for in my JavaScript, uh, so get element by ID. This is what the snippet looks like. So if you wanna go and add the snippet in there yourself, you can. And what it does is, it'll probably be easier just to show it. So if I trigger this, it's gonna scaffold out uh, all this stuff and then I just type in what I want to be getting. So we don't have another uh, by ID right now, but I'm just kinda showing you guys in general, I could have done get ID question and that would have done all that stuff for me much quicker. So snippets in general are, are pretty useful and you might, uh, as you do things repetitively, you might go ahead and add some of those uh, in VS Code. So the next thing we want is our choices. So again, this is going to be uh, pulling from uh, basically a class name. So we want to do get elements by class name, and that class name is going to be choice choice text. And I want to show you just the log here of choices. So this is where we want to have our console open. So choices is actually gonna be an HTML collection. It's a node list is what it is. Or actually maybe HTML collection is different than a node list. So if you do a query selector all, it gives you a node list. Uh, here it's an HTML selection. Uh, but regardless of that, we want to convert this to an array so that we can do uh, use some array functions on it. So we can do that by saying array, array.from, and then passing in that uh, HTML collection as the parameter. So save this and then we'll refresh and now you'll see that we've got an array of these four different choices. And inside of here, you can see there's a property called dataset. Dataset is where you add custom properties and it's anything that's prefixed with data will basically become a property on that node. So it strips out the data dash part and then it just takes number and whatever value you give it here. So that's where our custom attribute is that we'll use in a second. All right, so we're gonna need to create a couple of variables here. We're gonna do a current question variable and it's gonna be an object that we'll talk about in a minute. We're going to create a variable for accepting answers. And this is so that we can create a delay after someone answers, we create like a second delay before we let them answer again. 
we're going to need a score that's going to start at zero. We'll need a question counter, which is at zero as well. So this is basically what number, what question are you on? Then we'll have an empty array of available questions and available questions is basically going to be a copy of our full question set. And we're going to take questions out of the available questions array as we use them so that we can always find a unique question to give the user. And then I've got a questions array with some dummy data in here. So I'm going to copy this thing in and you guys can grab this from the source code or take your time and pause and, and paste this in if you need to. But what this is, is each question is going to be an object. It's going to have a question field, which is actually the question. It's going to have a choice one, two, three, and four. And then it's going to have, uh, it's going to tell you which one is the answer. And I didn't do, didn't do answers this uh, integer as zero base indexing. It's actually starting at one. So this one means it's going to be this top one here. You probably figured that out by the question. Uh, so the way we can use this is we can dynamically ac get access to this choice uh, or excuse me, check to see if the choice is correct, basically by seeing if the number in that choice uh, matches up with our answer. So we'll see, we'll see more specifically what that means in a minute. And just a few more things we needed to do. I uh, need to create a couple of constants. These are going to be a few things necessary for the game itself. So one is the correct bonus. So when you get a answer correct, how much is it worth? And we're going to say 10. You could tweak this if you wanted. And then the second thing is uh, max questions. And we're going to start off with three. So this is going to be how many questions does uh, a user get before they finish the uh, before they finish basically. So let's start by uh, let's create a start game and we'll just do a couple of things in here. So we're going to set the question counter. Just make sure that it's starting at zero. It probably is, but just we're going to basically use this as a reset. Then we're going to set the score and then we're going to say available questions. We're going to copy in all the questions from the questions array and you can use the spread operator here, which is three, uh, three dots. And what this is saying is take this array, spread out each of its items and put them into a new array. And that's what available questions is going to be. So if I do a log of available questions, it's going to be, oh, we actually have to call the start game function. So at the very bottom here, this is what we will do eventually is call start game. And so now you'll see that available questions is basically a full copy of the questions array. And the reason we need to do that, if we, if we just assigned available questions to questions, when we make changes to either one, it's going to affect the other. They're both going to be pointing to the same thing. We actually want it to be a full copy, which is why we do the spread operator to get a full copy of all those questions from the questions array into available questions. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do in start game is called get new question. And that's a function that we need to create here. So let's copy this. That's gonna be our next function. And uh, I didn't mention this, but I'm using uh, arrow syntax, fat arrow syntax, uh, ESX for ESX functions. And this just gives you a, a more concise uh, way to write functions. So this is the function name. Uh, it, these are the parameters. If you don't have any parameters, you need to uh, have the open and close parens. If you just have one param, you can just type it in without the parens. Uh, but we don't have any, so we need to have the open and close there. So the first thing we want to do is take that question counter and we just want to say plus plus. So uh, when we start the game, this will increment it to one. Now we need to get a random question. Uh, so what we're going to do, and I can show you guys in here, we want to get a random number between zero and three. So uh, the math dot random random function by itself will give you a decimal between zero and one. If you want to get, an integer out of that, you can do uh, multiply that times a number. So times three, for example, this will give you a, uh, a number between, between uh, zero and three. And then if we wanted to make that an integer, we can do a math floor on this to take uh, the lower number of this. And just notice as I kind of keep running through this, it's going to give me a random number here. Uh, which is what we want. So I'm going to take this and copy it. And instead of hard coding this to three, I'm going to say available questions dot length because that's going to change. So if we start with three questions and we use one, then we're only going to have uh, one or two questions left in our available 
question. So we always want to base this on the length of that array. So we're going to assign this to a variable called question index. And uh, I'm going to get a reference to the current question by getting it out of the available questions array, available questions, and then use our question index. And now I want to set the question, uh, the HTML element, the inner text to be the current question. So the question that we just loaded and it's question property. So when I say this, uh, let's see, inner text, what I do wrong here? Did I misspell it? No, it looks like I have misspelled question here. You guys probably saw that a long time ago. Sorry about that. But notice that when I save and refresh this page, it's actually pulling one of those questions uh, and displaying it correctly, which is awesome. So we want to do basically the same kind of thing for uh, each of our choices. So what we can do is we can grab our choices. We can say for each. And this is going to iterate through each of those choices. It's going to give us a reference to each choice. And then inside of here, we want to get that, uh, that number from the data set property. So if you remember, we set that uh, data number property here. We want to get a reference to that number. And so we can do that by saying choice dot data set and then give me the number property out of it. So that's how you get access to those custom attributes. And then we can say choice dot enter text is current question. So out of the current question, we want to get choice and then we want to use that number to get the choice out of it. So if you look at our array here of uh, questions, each question has choice one, two, three, four. So this way we can grab the choice property here. We can get the data attribute number associated with it and we can use that to get, um, to get the actual appropriate choice out of the current question. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So let me save this. Now you'll see that our, when I refresh, the not only is the question being populated, let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so not only is the question being populated, but so are all of the choices. Now one thing I'm looking at here that uh, we probably should do is on our container, we'll just add, where's container in here? Container, container. We'll add some padding. So if we get to a smaller screen, we'll add, let's say, two rim on either side. So this will just give us a little bit of padding here to make sure that it's not right up against the edge. All right, so a couple, there's actually a few more things we need to do here. Uh, one, we need to take that available questions array and we need to splice out uh, the question that we just used. So we wanna use that question index. So that's gonna tell it where to splice out and then we wanna splice out one. So this is gonna take the available questions array and it's gonna get rid of that question that we just used. Because again, when we get our new question, we don't wanna be able to choose from that existing, uh, from the question, from questions that we've already used. And the last thing in here, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do this now. Accepting answers is gonna be true. So after we've loaded our question, then we wanna go ahead and say, yeah, let's go ahead and allow a user to answer. And uh, we actually wanna set this to false originally so that they can't answer before we're ready and have everything loaded. So this is getting to be a long video, so uh, we're gonna try to work through this for just a few more minutes. Now, we wanna do another uh, for each on our choices outside, and we wanna grab each choice, and we wanna add an event listener. So add an event listener, and this is gonna be a click, and it's gonna take uh, the event as an argument, and then inside of here, uh, I can just kind of log out e.target so we can see what's going on. So for each one of these, as we click, uh, we should see the element, it finishes reloading. So there's the one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. So we're able to click and get a reference to which choice they clicked. Now we need to basically take this data attribute number and check to see the real answer choice. So we won't quite do that yet. What we're gonna do is first, if we're not accepting answers, so if we're not ready for them to answer, we're just gonna return. We're gonna ignore the fact that they clicked on it. Uh, then we're going to set accepting answers to false because we're, we're gonna end up having a little bit of a delay here and we don't want them to click immediately. Uh, and then I'm just gonna get a reference to a few things. So get uh, cot selected, selected choice equals e.target and then selected answer 
the way we get that is uh, selected choice and then the data set and then that uh, number property again. And the last thing we want to do in here is call get new question because that's where we after we've answered a question, then we want to go ahead and get the new one. So after I click here, um, what would you, which element does the script tag go in script? That one. So one thing I realized we forgot to do is notice I'm not getting any click action over here on the right. So uh, the reason is if we look in and inspect this, this text is not taking up the entire uh, width. So we actually want to grab the game CSS, grab the choice text and say width is going to be 100% also. So now we can click on these. Now, so what's going to happen is since we are calling get new question after we've uh, made a selection, it's going to load a new question. So you can see that kind of going through there. Then you get to a point where you get an error here and it says cannot read question of property. So what this is, is after we've used all of our questions, you can see that I've logged out that we have no questions left in the available questions array. So this is basically when the game is going to be over. So we want to check if available questions dot length is zero or the question counter greater than or equal to the max questions then we want to go to the end page and uh, to do that we can say window dot location dot assign and assign it to slash end.html. Now, obviously, we don't have the end HTML file yet. That's what we'll do in one of the next videos. Uh, but this will go ahead and try to get it there. So if there's no questions left in the array, or if we've we've used uh, we've given the user all the questions that we want to, so we could potentially have a question set of 100, but we only want to let them answer 10. If this question counter gets above that 10, the max questions, then we'll go ahead and return as well. So uh, if I save this one last time and then go ahead and click through, yeah, 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 this should try to go to an end HTML page, which is exactly what we want. So uh, that was a longer video. That was a lot of good stuff, I think. We were able to load our questions from that array and then dynamically update the UI to reflect those new questions. So in this next video, we're gonna add some animations uh, for correctness when we answer our questions.